Psalms 23 this morning. The Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me... Well, what a shepherd he is, huh? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, that we can come in the house of God on this Sunday morning and worship you in spirit and in truth. Thankful for the scriptures, Lord, for they testify of thee. And Lord, reveal your precious promises. Lord, we're thankful that when man fell to sin, you made a way where man could be redeemed and restored unto God. God, we're certainly thankful that we can come out on this Sunday morning and let you know how much we really love you. Thank you, Lord, for a good report of the jail services this morning. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for the good singing we've enjoyed, and thank you for the reading of the Word of God. Now, Father, I do pray that, Lord, you would be with those that are traveling. I pray for those that are sick and afflicted. I pray for Miss Dawn. You would help her. She's recovering from surgery. I pray you'd continue to be with Miss Natalie as she's recovering. Father, I pray for Brother Bobby and Brother Luther. You know what those men of God have meant to, be, meant to people across this globe. Uh, and God, I pray for them this morning. I do pray for Brother Doug tonight that, God, you'd use him in a great capacity, Lord, to preach the gospel to the community there in Owenton. Lord, thank you again for your precious promises, and thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here. Now, for the next few, few minutes, use this unworthy vessel. Get glory to your name. Uh, uh, encourage and edify the saints of God. Uh, bring Holy Ghost conviction and bring Holy Ghost confirmation for the next few minutes. Uh, Father, we'll not fail to bless you and praise you for all that you do, for it's in the wonderful and holy and glorious name of the Lord Jesus that we ask these things. Uh, amen and amen. We find that the 23rd Psalm uh, is widely referred to as the chief of all psalms. Uh, there's no other psalm that is uh, as uh, notorious or famous as this psalm. Uh, it's not only a psalm that is chief among the psalms, uh, but can I say it is a psalm that brings great comfort. Uh, I don't know how many funerals uh, over the years that I've done where this psalm has brought comfort to a grieving family. Uh, it not only brings comfort, uh, but it's also a psalm that brings confidence. Uh, the first part of this psalm, David is talking about how the Lord comforted him, uh, but he concludes the psalm uh, in that the Lord has bred confidence to him uh, to trust uh, the mighty hand of God. Uh, but I'm interested in verse number 1 where David says the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, now I want to preach this morning on this thought, the shepherd of the shepherd. The shepherd of the shepherd. Uh, if you know the story of David, uh, David was a shepherd boy. He was out tending his father's sheep uh, when the Lord had sent Samuel, the high priest, down to anoint the next king of Israel. Uh, not only uh, was David anointed the next king of Israel, but he became the greatest king that Israel has ever known. Uh, but David, being a shepherd boy, uh, out there tending his father's sheep, uh, we know from his own testimony that he slew a lion and he slew a bear. Uh, we know that most of the psalms that he wrote, uh, some 60 of them, uh, he wrote out there on the hillside tending his father's sheep. Uh, 
And God raised up that little shepherd boy uh, uh, to become the shepherd over Israel. Uh, and he was only able to do that because uh, he learned that he had a shepherd too. Uh, 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 we find uh, 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 that he says, The Lord is my shepherd. Uh, the Bible makes it clear that the Lord Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. Uh, he's the great shepherd. Uh, he's the chief shepherd. Uh, but David said he's my shepherd. Uh, Friend, it's one thing to know about the Lord. Uh, it's another thing to know the Lord. Uh, and oh, what a blessing to know Him. Uh, so I find that the shepherd's shepherd uh, uh, reveals some things. Uh, and we find that uh, uh, we find His salvation is revealed. Uh, he says, the Lord's my shepherd. Uh, he had a personal relationship uh, with the Lord. Uh, I'm glad uh, uh, the third Saturday night of March 1974 uh, I trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior uh, and for these 49 years he's been the dearest friend that I've ever known. Uh, he not only uh, 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 let me know about him Brother Clint but I became uh, friends with him and knew him uh, as Lord and Savior. Uh, can I say the Bible makes it clear uh, uh, to know the shepherd. Uh, uh, you've got to know some things about you and about him and what he's willing to do for you. John 14, 6, the Bible says, uh, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man cometh unto the Father uh, but by me. Uh, Jesus is the only means of salvation. Uh, Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 says, Neither is there salvation uh, in any other name, uh, for there's none other name under heaven given among men uh, whereby we must be saved. Uh, can I say that at the name of Jesus, uh, not only can sinners be saved, uh, but all of hell quakes uh, at the mention of His name. Uh, uh, can I say that religion will not save us? Uh, all religion does is bring damnation. Uh, it just tells us we're not good enough to get to heaven on our own. Uh, uh, and in the Bible, I find one of the most religious men. Uh, his name was Nicodemus. Uh, Nicodemus, uh, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees in line to be the chief priest of Israel. Uh, and can I say Nicodemus uh, had the first five books of the Bible committed to memory. First five books. Anybody got all that down? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, uh, Deuteronomy. I got the names down. But I wonder how many of the verses we have committed to memory. They had all of them committed to memory. Can I say they studied under a certain scholar? Uh, can I say uh, as touching their the law, their lives were clean and pure. Uh, they did everything that was demanded of them. Uh, Nicodemus heard Jesus preach. He comes to him by night. He asks him, uh, he says, I know you're of God. No man can do the works you do lest he be of God. And this is what Jesus told this religious man, Nicodemus. Uh, John 3, 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Can I say we were born into this world naturally? But unless we get born again, born of the Spirit of God, born spiritually, uh, we cannot see uh, the kingdom of God. Uh, it takes a salvation experience where we trust in the Lord. Uh, the Bible makes it clear in Romans 3.10, uh, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Uh, the Bible tells us all of our righteousness uh, is as filthy rags. Uh, uh, we can work, uh, and we can give, uh, and we can do, uh, and we can do, uh, and all of our righteousness is still filthy rags. Uh, the Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We were all conceived in sin. Uh, we were all born sinners. Uh, we we're sinners by practice, sinners by nature. We were sinners. Uh, and my dear friends, I'm glad the Bible says Jesus came seeking to save sinners. Uh, save that which was lost. Uh, can I say that uh, uh, I, when I got born again and when I got saved... Uh, uh, the Lord Jesus uh, took my unrighteousness and washed it and cleansed me, uh, but He robed me in His righteousness. Uh, and when God the Father sees me, He no longer sees my sin. Uh, he no longer sees what I used to be. Uh, he sees the righteousness of Christ imputed unto me. Uh, and I can boldly say today, uh, I know that I'm going to heaven and my name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, uh, not because of my merit, uh, but because of the shepherd that I came to trust in whose name is Jesus uh, the Bible says in Romans 5 12 uh, wherefore as by one man Adam sin entered 
into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Uh, uh, the reason we uh, uh, see people die is because uh, sin came into this world. When Adam sinned against God, sin came, death came uh, and my dear friends, the only deliverance from death, the king of terrors uh, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Romans 5, 8 says, but God commended his love toward us uh, in that while we were yet sinners uh, Christ died for us uh, Romans 6 23 says the wages of sin is death uh, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord uh, I've told you all many a times uh, if you read in the paper and the obituary column was one day that Doug Foster died uh, I would write him up get a retraction uh, I am not dead uh, I'm alive forevermore I have eternal life uh, because Jesus saved my soul uh, oh I'll just change my wardrobe I put off this old body of clay uh, and put on a glorified body fashioned like the Lord's. Uh, Romans chapter 10 and verse number 8 says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, uh, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus uh, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Uh, can I say there's a lot of people that know Jesus died on the cross. Uh, there are a lot of people believe he resurrected from the dead. Uh, there are a lot of people believe he was born as a, uh, of a virgin, as a babe in a manger. They believe all of it in their head. They've just never accepted him in their heart. And there's a difference when it's in your heart mm, rather than in your head. Uh, can I say this? I'm not going to heaven because I'm a Baptist. I know a lot of Baptists that ain't going to heaven. It's not denomination that sends you to heaven. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the Bible says in Romans 8, 11, For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Not believe in him, but on him. Right. Believing on him is when you submit your will to his and you accept him as Lord and Savior. Verse 12 says, For there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Do you realize under the Old Testament economy, none of us had any hope? He came unto his own, the Jews, and, the own, uh, and his own received him not. But as many as would receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. He made a way where old Gentile sinners could be saved. And what a blessing. Uh, and again in verse 13 of Romans chapter 10, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, he said, If any would come to him, he'd no wise cast them out. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, I like Titus chapter 3 verse number 5, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us uh, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, uh, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Uh, that being justified by His grace, uh, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Uh, and then Paul wrote to the church of Colossae in Colossians 1.14, In whom we have redemption through His blood, uh, even the forgiveness of sins. Uh, I'm glad my sins have been forgiven. I'm glad Jesus is my Savior. Uh, the shepherd, shepherd uh, became a shepherd because of salvation. I'm glad I've been saved by the good grace of God. But James, I didn't deserve to be saved. Mm. If I got what I deserved, I'd go to hell. But I'm not going because I've been saved. Huh? I'm glad, hallelujah, Jesus loved me and gave himself for me and made a way where I could be saved. Uh, notice in Psalms 23, he's not only the shepherd and he's not only provides salvation. Notice he's the superintendent. Look what he says. He says, I shall not want, in verse number 1. David says, I don't want for anything. Why? The Lord's my shepherd. Look what he says. He says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Notice the shepherd's his superintendent. He leads him to green pastures. He leads him beside the still waters. Can I say that Sheep need green pastures to eat. And sheep don't drink from troubled water. Sheep are skittish. 
So the shepherd leads them to still waters where they can get a drink of water. Green pastures where they can feed. Can I say God's people, God always takes care of them. David went on to write that he'd never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. God always is taking care of his people, and I bless the Lord. Miss Nett, I was riding down the road the other day, and she looked at me and she said, you realize everything we ever desired, God's blessed us with it. Huh? What a God. Huh? He superintends, he's the superintendent of our soul. He knows where to lead us and to guide us and how to take care of us, uh, how to prosper us, uh, how to bless us. Uh, Boy, I appreciate the goodness of God. He's not, not only noticed the superintendent, but notice the standing. Look what David says in verse number 3. He says, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He says, The Lord restored my soul. Hmm? You see, before we got saved, our soul was at enmity with God. But when we got saved, he restored our soul and he restored the relationship between our soul and God. Do you realize before Adam sinned that God and Adam fellowshiped and walked together in the Garden of Eden? But when Adam sinned, that relationship was broken. Can I say back in that day before Adam was tainted by sin, he could see the spiritual world just as well as the natural world. He walked with God. That's foreign to us. Because we can't see the spiritual world. Why? Because sin came into this world. But when we get saved, the Lord restores our soul, and our soul can now have fellowship with God because God indwells every believer. He seals us with the Holy Spirit of promise. And what a blessing that I can walk with the Lord and talk with the Lord. Now, I don't hear His audible voice. But he does speak to my heart, and he does speak to me through his word. I'm amazed at how many people uh, are taught not to read the Bible. You know the Bible's the greatest book that's ever been pinned down? Do you know the Bible tells us how wicked man is, but how great God is? And God loved I, I know that man didn't write the Bible because if man wrote the Bible, it tells how great man is and how wicked God is. Isn't that what the world does today? But I'm glad that in this Bible's some 30,000 promises to us. And we can claim those promises and live and abide in those promises uh, because He restored our soul. We have a relationship with God. But not only that, but He went on to say that He leads us in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. I'm amazed at how many times, Brother Ron, I wanted to go this way, but the Lord said go this way, only to find out that way was a bad way. But this way was a way of peace and life and hope. And he leads us in paths of righteousness. There's a lot of times there's things happening in our life we don't understand. But as the Lord leads us through them, we look back and we see that he was there all the time. And he helped us in those paths of righteousness. We don't only see salvation in this psalm, and the superintendent of God, the shepherd in this psalm, and the standing we have with God in this psalm. Verse number 4, we find the solace in this psalm. Look what David says. This is where his confidence starts picking up. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Uh, David was a hunted man. Saul, the king of Israel, knew that David had been anointed, and Saul knew that if he destroyed David, then Saul's kids would never become king. And Saul got bitter and angry because his relationship with God had failed, and he was jealous of David. And David ended up dwelling in caves and dens for several years. And there was constantly an enemy seeking to hunt him down. But David found solace in the midst of all his troubles. He says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Hmm? He says, that For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now the rod here is a picture. The shepherd had a rod, and that rod always was a, spoke of the shepherd's authority and the shepherd's guidance and the shepherd's discipline. 
He would use that rod to pull a sheep that was walking the wrong direction. Uh, he'd use that rod uh, uh, to, to pounce it on the ground. The sheep would line up. Uh, that rod's a picture of the Word of God. It's our absolute authority. I do not stand here on my own authority. I do not stand here in my own wisdom. I stand here in the wisdom of God. Uh, what a blessing to have His Word. It's our authority. It teaches us how to walk circumspectly. It teaches us how to conduct our lives. Uh, it teaches us the discipline we ought to have in our lives as the children of God. Uh, and we find those in the Word of God. That's the rod. The staff was something he would lean on. The staff was something that is an emblem of divine strength. It's a picture of the Holy Spirit. How many times do we lean on Him? How many times does He prop us up and strengthen us when we think we have no strength? Uh, and we find in this verse uh, the soothing presence of the shepherd. He says, even though I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Hmm? Uh, I don't know how many times I face things and folks wonder why my nerves aren't tore up. It's because the Lord's with me. And Miss Annette called me on Valentine's Day of 2019 to tell me that the test results came in and that I had cancer. I didn't fall all apart. I let her know the Lord had it. Long before it ever got to me, the Lord knew what was going on. Huh? You say... How'd you go through those cancer surgeries? I had him with me. Uh, it's amazing. You go in there and they start hooking you up to machines and start running an IV and all that. And they look at me and my heart rate was 52. They said, well, you're not upset. No. My blood pressure was perfect. Well, you're not upset. No. Why? Because the creator of the universe was already in that room with me long before they ever showed up. Are you listening? Uh, can I say this verse also pictures the Scripture's promises are sure. He says, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Hmm. I don't know how many times I got troublesome news, but yet I could go to the Scriptures and find a verse. That gives me assurance. It also pictures the Spirit's peace is sublime. Thank God for the peace of God. You know, the Bible says the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Folks that don't know the Lord don't know what makes us tick. Things that causes their world to fall apart doesn't cause our world to fall apart. And Brother Tony, they think we're just a little loco. Woohoo! You don't think right. You should be upset. Why are you not upset? Because I have the peace of God. That's why. Mm. Well, I don't understand that. Well, if you met him, then you would. It amazes me, Brother Clint. People believe that Ben Franklin flew a kite with a key to it, and that helped you know, determine what electricity was. They believe that... You know, Edison, you know, after a thousand chances, you know, he created the light bulb. Uh, they believe that George Washington was the first president. They believe all, but nobody was alive to see all that. They believe the history books, but they don't believe the greatest book. Mm -mm. Uh, can I say, this is more true than any history book, and this is a history book. It amazes me every time science tries to disprove it, all they do is prove it. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I have a, the Spirit's peace. It's sublime. Mm -hmm. Can I say, in verse number 5, we find the strength that David found in the shepherd. He said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. I love it when Brother James sings that song about verse number 5. Uh, can I say that he finds a feast in the midst of fear? When the enemy shows up, the Lord gave David a table where he sat down to eat, and all the enemy could do was watch him eat. Hmm? Yeah. Well, I'm glad the Lord knows how to keep at bay the powers of the charred region of the damned 
I'm glad the Lord just allows us to enjoy life in the midst of everything going crazy in this world. Uh, you know, there are people that are against us today that believe the Bible, but I don't sit and wring my hands about it because I'm on the king's business. And the king still is in control whether we believe that or not. huh? He finds a feast in the midst of fear, but he also finds a fragrance to others that's foreign. He said, he anointeth my head with oil. That was a practice of perfuming. And they would do that with the king before he would go into a great feast and others would smell the, the, the radiant fragrances and, and that showed uh, 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 his uh, wealth and his standing. Uh, and can I say that the Lord gives us a fragrance that others don't know where that comes from. Hmm? Hmm? What a blessing. I'm glad he's anointed our head with oil. And again, the oil is always a picture of the Holy Spirit. Hmm? And I bless his name. But he also gives us a filling while others are fretting. He said, my cup runneth over. It's running over the cup and into the saucer. And God has been so good to us, it just bubbles out of our cup into our saucer. And other people are fretting, worried about inflation and worried about this and that. And trust me, I don't like inflation. I don't, try, I, I, I don't like paying as much as you got to pay for eggs and gas and milk and all that. But I don't fret about it. Because every time I need milk, the Lord's blessed me where I can get milk. Every time I need eggs, the Lord blessed me with eggs. Every time I need, the Lord always blesses. I mean, last Monday, I'm just sitting in my office minding my own business, and Miss Toey sent me enough food to feed an army. Huh? <laughs> what a blessing. Uh, she did. I ate, took it home. Miss Annette and Jordan ate. Huh? And Christian probably ate some on the way to my office. I don't know. Say, where does that come from? The hand of God's good. You just can't outgive God. Uh, my cup runneth over. That's why my belly runneth over my belt buckle. Huh? <laughs> hey, the Bible does say the righteous shall be made fat. I'm a Bible believer, brother. I want to yeah, get all that I can get, huh? I'm addicted to food. Hmm? Say, what kind? The kind I like. Let me, let me conclude this message. The shepherd's shepherd. David is bragging on how good God's been to him in this psalm. And he concludes by showing how God has sustained him. Notice the sustaining of God. In verse 6 he says, Surely, in other words, without a doubt, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He sustained, first of all, with goodness. That's favor. Brother Clay and I sure would rather have God's favor than God's judgment on my life. And he says, goodness is going to follow me all the days of my life. What a statement. David writes this as, you know, a relatively young man. But he said, I've seen enough God to know he's been good to me thus far, and he'll be good to me the rest of the way. Hmm? He said, goodness is going to follow me. He says in mercy or grace, grace is going to follow us. I'm glad God has grace for everything we need. He has the grace of salvation. He has the grace of strength when I'm weak. He has the grace of supply when I'm in need. He has grace for every need. I've seen some, some families really tore up at the loss of the loved one and God just reaching that big barrel of grace put on them and He gives them dying grace. I've seen God do great things. You just can't outdo the grace of God. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah. If you say, Brother Doug, you can have God's grace or you can have Bill Gates' money, I'll take God's grace all day long. You know, because uh, money can only buy so much, but grace, grace takes you all the way to glory. Mm. Uh, and you can't buy the peace of God. Mm. You can't do it. And I thank God for His grace. And then He's also sustained. He says, And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He sustained until He gets to glory. He said, I'm going to dwell in God's house here, and then when I get over there. Uh, what a blessing. 
What a blessing to know a couple things. First of all, as a child of God, this is as close to hell as I'm ever going to get. And what a blessing to know that he's gone to prepare a place for me. He said, if you believe in my father, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. I'm glad I'm going to a place. Some call it heaven. Some call it glory. I just call it home. Can I say my citizenship is there? Can I say my conversation is recorded there? Can I say I'm already seated there in Christ Jesus? You say, how can that happen? Well, my soul was already in done business and is a part of all that. And see... My practical, what you see right now, is one of these days going to catch up with my positional, which is already there. Huh? The only thing keeping me from being there is this flesh. The Bible says be absent from the bodies, be present from the Lord. One of these days I'll just go to sleep in Jesus, wake up in glory. It'll be all right. Hmm? But I'm already there in God's eyes. He's already seen me there. And to think about what he has over yonder. Hmm? Huh? The Bible says it hadn't even entered in the heart of man what God hath prepared for them that love him. But John gave us a little glimpse. It says there's streets of gold and walls of jasper and gates of pearl. And there's a beautiful throne with lightnings and rainbows come out. And him that sits on the throne is the worthy lamb that died for our soul. And I bless his name. One of these days we get to go and be with him forevermore. Where he's the light of the city. There's no more need of a sun or a moon. He's the light of the city. And what a blessing to know it'll be just one eternal day forevermore where we'll dwell in the abode of God like God intended it to be all along. And what a blessing that'll be. David had these assurances and confidences because David was acquainted with the shepherd. Let me ask you a question this morning. Do you know the Lord? If you don't, you can just as many of you received an invitation for Miss Janet's birthday dinner we're going to have in a little bit, the Lord's going to give you an invitation. He's going to invite you to come and put your faith and trust in Him. We're going to have an invitation. So preacher, I don't know how to, how to be saved. I don't know how to trust in the Lord. If you come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you what the Bible says because our faith needs to stand in what God says, not what man says. Man will lie to you. Man will have a, a, a tainted view on some things. But do you realize we're going to be judged by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God? So certainly that's where we need to put our faith in. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And can I say the Bible says we're begotten again by an incorruptible seed, the word of God. And friend, we'll get somebody to take a Bible, show you how to be saved if you want to be saved. Maybe you're here today and you're saved. But you just want to come and thank the Lord for being your shepherd. We're going to give you that opportunity. Maybe you just want to come and tell him you love him. We're going to give you that opportunity. If he speaks to your heart, we want you to be obedient to what the Lord says because that's all that really matters is if we do what God says to do. So let's all stand right now. Brother Clint, if you'll come and get a song of invitation. Brother James is going to come sing a song of invitation. If God has spoken to your heart, you just mind the Lord. That's what this is about. My folks are coming, getting ready to sing, and folks are coming to the altar. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. We thank you for being our shepherd. Thank you for the 23rd Psalm and what it has meant to my heart, my life. And God, thank you for being a good God. God, you didn't have to send your son to die for our sin, but you did. You said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God, thank you for eternal life. Thank you, Lord, I don't have to fret over the king of terrors, death, because, God, you conquered death, hell, and the grave, and you removed the sting of death for all those that put their faith and trust in you. Now, Father, I don't know anybody's heart here today. But God, you know everyone's heart. God, I pray you'd speak to hearts. God, if there's any amongst us that's never trusted in Christ, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. God, I pray for those that have trusted in Christ. Maybe they're struggling a little bit. I pray you'd strengthen them. Lord, you'd show them that peace that passes all understanding. Maybe there's someone here today, Lord, just wants to come and 
tell you how much you mean to them. Maybe there's someone here you're speaking to about something else. God, I just pray your will would be done in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Help folks to take that step of faith. And God will bless you for what you do. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.